Well, the way he has developed from my point of view is he is, has sort of evolved from a very great specialist in contemporary music and in uh, masters of the 19th century virtuoso pianists, a whole repertoire that nobody plays, and broadened his base beyond this so that he is now a very probing and very uh, interesting musician. Uh, he's trying to, um, in a way, find areas that he perhaps missed in his earlier training. Uh, he would never have played a, a, Schumann sonata, a Schubert sonata if I had asked him to. He just wouldn't have. He just didn't feel any affinity for it. And nor Chopin never felt any kind of an affinity for Chopin, and now he's programming Schumann, uh, Schubert, and Chopin, and who knows? Someday he may even uh, program some Bach. <laughs> he he has really, you know, he. It's it's no disgrace. It's no shame for a, an artist not to have an affinity for a certain period or a composer. If you look at the career of Arthur Schnabel, one of the great, great pianists, he never played Bach. He could teach it, and he, he could play it privately, but never in public. And um, he, although he, he never tried uh, to play contemporary music, when he composed, it was in a contemporary style. So, I mean, there are all kinds of combinations of, of artists uh, uh, Rubenstein, as wonderful a, a pianist as he was, there were certain areas he never touched because he knew. And I think it's very wise for an artist to, to play from his strengths mm. and then later to see how, how things develop. And I think that's what's happening to Mark now. Uh, today, uh, I, I feel sorry in a way for pianists because they cannot hone their craft by playing things over and over again the, the number of recitals that they can play are so limited by the market today. Today it's uh, a market of concertos, and 80% of a, an artist's performances are with orchestra. So it also limits the number of pianists who make a living. Uh, and so it's a, uh, I would say probably in the past, 80% of, of an artist's uh, performances were solo recitals, and 20% with orchestra. It's just reversed now. Mm -hmm. And as a result, also, the conductors have a, a much greater power, so to speak, to, to make uh, an artist. If, you, if an artist is lucky enough to latch on to a few composer, uh, conductors who like him and will use him, uh, he's much better off than with a management uh, who doesn't do anything for him. And uh, also there, are, of course, with the new marathon playing louder and faster, there are more people in the market doing this. So that there is uh, there's much more competition for the very few places that remain. So it's a very difficult uh, field to be in at this point. I don't envy anybody who, who tries. And yet you can't stop them. You, no, because they, they need to. With music, you either have to love it or, or if you don't have a passion, and if you're not a little bit crazy, you, you don't uh, go into the field. You have to be absolutely compulsive about it. And I tell my students, you know, if there's anything else you feel absolutely passion for, pursue it. But if you can't live without music, then God bless you. Yes, it's, it really is true. Interesting, though, with Marc Andre that he has pursued a path where he has hewn out a repertoire which is off the beaten track and that people seem to be coming to him. Uh, why is that? Well, this? yes. The, the, there are several reasons for it. Number one, he plays absolutely marvelously. Uh, plays it marvelously to this extent that he makes sense out of it. Uh, he hears everything very well and he hears uh, very clearly so that you're able to follow the music. Um, 
he never bangs. He never uh, he never plays out of proportion, and I think that that's very important. Whereas today, people of uh, many people uh, don't play that attractively or that meaningfully.